Good morning. Uh, today is Monday, the 11th of May, and I'm excited uh, to be with you uh, this morning as we have morning prayer together. Um, particularly, I'd like to lift up uh, at least uh, two people today that immediately are on my mind. One is Debbie's cousin, uh, Kathy, who is undergoing a medical procedure today, and we pray for her. And we pray that this procedure will go well, and we pray for her health. And also, uh, we pray for the repose of the soul of Danny. Uh, Danny is Bill, Birch, uh, Bill Birch's cousin, whom we baptized uh, several years ago. And uh, uh, Danny uh, has entered into the Lord's uh, presence. Uh, that is, uh, he has uh, died. And we pray for the repose of his soul and for his family, for Bill and Judy and uh, Danny's uh, immediate family and loved ones. And so we just lift the entire family up today uh, as they mourn uh, the loss of a loved one, but also celebrate uh, a life of a Christian. Well, we begin with our opening sentence uh, for Easter, uh, which is again from Colossians 3, uh, 3, 1. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, uh, seated at the right hand of God. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. Uh, we have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and apart from your grace, uh, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life uh, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. O come, let us adore him. Alleluia. The Jubilate, page 15. O be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Be assured that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. O go your way into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and speak good of his name, for the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth from generation to generation. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. O come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Our psalm appointed for today is Psalm 25, and is found on page 297 of the Book of Common Prayer. Unto you, O Lord, will I lift up my soul, my God, I have put my trust in you. O let me not be ashamed, neither let my enemies triumph over me. For all those who hope in you shall not be ashamed, but those who deal untruly shall be put to confusion. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me forth in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. In you has been my hope all the day long. Call to remembrance, O Lord, your tender mercies and your loving kindnesses, which have been from of old. Remember not the sins and offenses of my youth, but according to your mercy, think on me, O Lord, in your goodness. Gracious and righteous is the Lord. Therefore will he teach sinners in the way. Those who are meek shall, be, shall he guide in judgment, and those who are gentle shall he teach his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy 
and truth to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. For your sake, O Lord, forgive my sin, for it is great. Who is the one who fears the Lord? He shall teach him the way that he shall choose. He shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the land. The Lord reveals his secret counsel to those who fear him, and he will show them his covenant. My eyes are ever looking to the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Turn to me and have mercy on me, for I am desolate and in misery. The sorrows of my heart are enlarged. O oh, bring me out of my troubles. Look upon my adversity and misery, and forgive me all my sin. Consider my enemies, how many they are, and how they bear a tyrannous hate against me. O oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I have put my trust in you. Let integrity and righteousness dealings preserve me, and my hope has been in you. Deliver Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Our lesson is now from Luke, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 7, verses 11 through 35. Soon afterward, Jesus went to a cow town called Nain, and his disciples and a great crowd uh, went with him. As he drew near to the gate of the town, behold, a man who had died was being carried out the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and a considerable crowd from the town was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and said to her, Do not weep. Then he came up and touched the bier, and the bearer stood still, and he said, Young man, I say to you, rise. And the dead man sat up and began to speak. And Jesus gave him to his mother. Fear seized them all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has arisen among us, and God has visited his people. And this report about Jesus spread through the whole of Judea and all the surrounding country. The disciples of John reported all these things to him, and John, calling two of his disciples to him, sent them to the Lord, saying, are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? And when the men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you, saying, Are you the one or who is to come, or shall we look for another? In that hour he healed many people of diseases and plagues and evil spirits, and on many who were blind he bestowed sight. And Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight. The lame walk. Lepers are cleansed. And the deaf hear. The dead are raised up. The poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is one who is not offended by me. When John's messengers had gone, Jesus began to speak to the crowds Concerning John, what did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? What then you, did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Behold, those who are dressed in splendid clothing and live in luxury are in king's courts. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. For he is of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger, messengers before your face, who will prepare the way before you. Jesus continued, I tell you, among those born of women, none is greater than John. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. When all the people heard this, and the tax collectors too, they declared God just, having been baptized with the baptism of John. But the Pharisees, and the lawyers rejected the purposes of God for themselves, not having been baptized by him. 
To what then shall we compare the people of this generation? And what are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another, We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not weep. For John the Baptist has come eating no bread and drinking no wine, and you say he has a demon. The Son of Man has come eating and drinking, and you say, Look at him, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is justified by her children. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with Canticle 5, found on page 83 of the Book of Common Prayer. Canticle 5. I will sing to the Lord, for he is lofty and uplifted. The horse and its rider has he hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my Savior. This is my God, and I will praise him. The God of my people, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty warrior. The Lord is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh and his army has he hurled into the sea. The finest of those who bear armor have been drowned in the Red Sea. The fathomless deep has overwhelmed them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in might. Your right hand, O Lord, is, has overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, awesome in renown, and worker of wonders. You stretched forth your right hand, the earth swallowed them up. With your constant love you led your people you redeemed, and you brought them in safety to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them on the mount of your possession. The resting place you have made for yourself, O Lord, the sanctuary, O Lord, that your hand has established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill us today with your presence as we bask in this beautiful day and the sun, the way we bask in the risen Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'd like to reflect with you about um, uh, the healing of the widow's son in the town of Nain. Uh, there's a profound teaching that I would like us to appreciate in this. Uh, first of all, the motivation behind people. I was watching a series, um, you know, binge watching something called Marse Marseille. Uh, it's a French um, sort of mini series put out by Netflix. And, uh, of course, it has all of the, you know, it's not a, it's not a Christian movie, a TV series. Let me make that clear right from the get-go. It's sort of like a French version of um, House of Cor Cards, which is a, an English show that Americans, we, we adopted in a, in a series that, that ended in scandal. But in this series that I was watching, uh, a person was trying to help a young man, a, a young boy whose father is an immigrant, and uh, had been taken into uh, detention. And uh, the, the teacher, the person who's sort of in the background helping out this, this lady, uh, said nothing is done without some selfishness involved. Uh, this woman had, this, had recognized uh, the child as a piano prodigy, uh, a young, young boy able to play the piano beautifully. And so her motivation was to take this little young Mozart and turn him into something. And, and of course, his immediate need was he needed documentation papers. What is the motivation behind people? We can see what they want us to see. We can see their deeds, and often that does reveal something behind it. But there's that sense of acting, of hypocrisy, the, one allowing others to see only what they want. So I think it's important when we look at Jesus, when the scriptures reveal something about his motives. What is God's motive? And, and I, want you, I just want you to look at uh, chapter 7, uh, and, and we'll see at verse 13, referring to Jesus, 
And the Lord saw her, and he had compassion on her. Jesus is motivated by compassion. We see this repeated time and time again in his miracles. But I think in the greatest miracle, uh, the, the, the cross where he dies for our sins, yours and mine, compassion, love is the motivation behind Jesus, the motivation behind God. And so looking at the circumstances as he approached the town gate of Nain, Jesus sees a funeral procession. He sees a young man being carried away on a funeral bier, and he sees his mother, and we're told about her circumstances, and we can so quickly read over it and, and not understand what is really being emphasized in this, in this healing. Um, this man, this young fellow has died, and he is the only son in this society 2,000 years ago, the son is the heir, and the firstborn son has the responsibility of taking care of the family. The parents in old age, the mother, if the husband dies and is, she's left a widow, it's his responsibility to provide for her, to take care of her. Uh, it's his responsibility to look after the other children. Even when they're adults, he becomes the patriarch. And so in this little passage, we learn two things. He, the, the, the person who has died, the young man who has died, is an only son. There is no plan B. There is no backup system here. And we find out that his mother is a widow, that this young man's father has died already. And therefore, he's the patriarch, and now he's died. And so this poor woman is, is left without any support of family that we can see. Her husband is dead. Her son, who would, her only son, who would be the one responsible providing for her, he's dead. It's, it's truly real tears that she no doubt is crying not only for the immediate loss of a loved one, which is horrible enough, especially in this pandemic where we hear about people dying and the death, death toll, and gosh, uh, we've surpassed the Vietnam War, I understand now. Um, it's serious. And Jesus, his words to her is, do not weep. I could see the Pharisees and the tax collectors and the self-righteous immediately taking offense by his words. There's nothing to do for this woman but weep. Those are her circumstances. And he says, don't weep. Now, is he being a Pollyanna? No. He's getting ready to act and intervene and take away that suffering. And then he does something else extraordinary something that goes against the, 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 the teaching. It will make him impure. It will make him unclean. He touches the funeral bier, which is the equivalent of touching the body. It's absolutely forbidden. And no self-respecting rabbi would do such a thing. And so he says, do not weep. And then he reaches and touches the body. And no wonder the, those carrying have stopped and stood still. And then he says something even more extraordinary. He speaks to the dead and says, Young man, I say to you, arise. And the young man sat up and began to speak. And Jesus gave him to his mother. We often think of just the raising of Lazarus, but you don't forget the underscore here, especially when the inquiry comes from John the Baptist's disciples. John's in prison probably at this time, and he's beginning to, if, if Jesus is the truth, the, the way, the truth, and the life, Satan is the way to death and lies and perdition. And, and Jesus tells the disciples, the two disciples that John has sent, well, 
he's probably having a moment of crisis. That is John while he's in prison. Or is Jesus the one? I thought he was, but, but well, I'm languishing here in prison. And of course, we know what's going to happen. He's going to lose his head. All because a young girl dances and pleases the king. And Jesus tells those folks who've been sent, go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight. The lame walk. The lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have good news preached to them. Jesus is doing the mighty works of God, motivated by compassion. That's one of the reasons we can appreciate why he tells sometimes those he's healed and cured, don't tell anybody. His motivation is not like the temptation that Satan put before him. You know, do this marvelous act, and everybody will see and recognize you as the Messiah and fall down and worship you, if only you'll worship me, says Satan. Jesus is not about himself. He's about doing the Father's will, and that's always motivated by love and compassion, not about making himself the center, although indeed he is. There's an exclamation here after fear has overcome the people of what they've seen. A great prophet has arisen among us. God has visited his people. I conclude by just taking us back to the shepherds in the field at the birth of Jesus. It's one of the revelations that's proclaimed to them at the birth of Christ to the shepherds in the field. God has visited his people. God visits his creation. God saves his creation if we will only accept his son. We'll accept the grace that he gives us. What a powerful message today on this Monday, especially as, again, we join with the Birch family in mourning the loss of Danny as we lift up those loved ones who are medi undergoing medical procedures. We are aware of so many people who are sick and at risk and are suffering. God is motivated by compassion, his love, and his actions are more victorious even over death. Praise be to God. We continue now with the Apostles' Creed, page 20. Pardon me. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us and grant us your salvation. O Lord, lead those who govern us Excuse me, O Lord, guide those who govern us and lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness and let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people and bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God and take not your Holy Spirit from us. The colic of the day comes from yesterday, this past Sunday, uh, as we uh, are in the fifth, the week of the fifth Sunday of Easter. Almighty God, whom truly to know 
is everlasting life. Grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, as the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in, in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen a colic for the renewal of life. O God, the King Eternal, who divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires. Incline our hearts to keep your law and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when the night comes, rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The first prayer for our mission. Almighty and everlasting God, who alone works great marvels, send down upon our clergy and the congregations committed to their charge the life-giving spirit of your grace. Shower them with the continual dew of your blessing and ignite in them a zealous love of your gospel through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite your prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings. You may record those on our parish website. Uh, we will then be able to join with you. And of course, there's a place on there uh, to record praise reports so that we can celebrate uh, as Jesus uh, answered um, the, disciple, the two disciples of John the Baptist. Go and tell what you've heard and seen. And may we share what we have heard and seen, for God is active. We continue to pray for Danny, the repose of his soul, for Bill and Judy and family, for Kathy, for those on our parish prayer list, for those known to you, O Lord. May the poor not have the hope taken away from them. We are always concerned with the widow, the orphan, the prisoner, the traveler, all who have no rights and depend upon you. Help us learn from them, O Lord, for at the end of the day, we have nothing to offer you but our love in return for yours, our thanksgiving for your grace and for your love. And now a prayer for the Universal Church, page 646. O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new, and that all things are being brought into their perfection by him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The General Thanksgiving, page 25. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks and for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. We pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Prayer of John, 
St. John Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, our Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Well, I wish you a wonderful and glorious day. I, of course, look forward to joining you, God willing, tomorrow for morning prayer, which will be Tuesday. But ask that you would continue to pray for us, uh, the leadership in the local church at, here at Holy Cross, uh, for me as the pastor and rector, for our vestry, uh, as we seek to uh, discern God's will and the bishops, uh, al bishop allowing us to resume worship uh, this coming Sunday. God willing, and that we're able to do those things that are necessary to ensure as safe, as but as best we can, a safe environment for worship, uh, conducive to the worship of the risen Lord, uh, safe for those who gather, and also understanding that many will not be able to gather because of uh, medical condition or, or, or they're at a risk group and so forth, and so that our technological challenges uh, through the internet, uh, we can meet those, we can rise to those so that we can continue to broadcast and uh, have communion together, either spiritually or actually. And so I'd appreciate your prayers uh, this week, as, as always. And I know they come, I feel them. And so I want to say thank you. And God bless you. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a wonderful and blessed day.